started a great initiative. I'm so grateful to be part of this program. Good evening. I am always proud to be South African. It is my honor to be handing over this year's Ubuntu Social Responsibility Award to a most deserving individual whose work empowers boys, men, and society at large in the SADC region and beyond. Ladies and gentlemen, the winner is Mteto Christopher Chemese. Mr. Mteto Christopher Chemese is a qualified clinical psychologist from Danzani Township, Eastern Cape Province. Known as the Village Shrink, based on his mental health television show piloted in 2016, Chemese has been a sought-after social commentator since 2002, trying to get mental health service accessible to marginalized communities, especially townships and villages. It was in July 2018 that Chemese resigned from his job and started visiting different townships and villages in South Africa, other parts of the African continent, as well as places like Kingston and Jamaica, focusing his efforts in working mainly with boys and men in disadvantaged communities, advocating for the promotion of mental health, violence prevention, and positive masculinities. All protocol observed, am I audible? Uh, the funny thing is that um, some months ago, I was so inspired by Theo's story from Alex. My name is Mteto, I'm from Tanzania Township in East London. And then I sent him an inbox on Facebook to say, yo man, like I'm so inspired by you. So please, Theo, please just, just read my inbox, Mteto, you inspire me about that. Like, I'm wearing nice shoes, by the way, but I must be wearing some different shoes, you know. <laughs> My grandmother, uh, Uma Mgosini, uh, she's 104, Uma Kaaba. She's never been to school. And um, she asked me a few months ago to say, hey, am I gonna die without this thing being sorted? And that thing being sorted is a land claim that was registered in 2014. I am a son of farmers in this country who died farm workers. So Minister Lendo Yenzayo today and many other years before is not a joke. I see on Twitter and people writing about Matiba being a sellout. I used to work for Nelson Mandela Children's Fund in 2007. I saw Matiba standing there in his last event when he was at the Nelson Mandela Children's Fund. He stood there. Helman Kelele of Pirates is my witness. He's a coach now. Mandela stood there for kids from a children's home singing for him, not one song, but two songs. And on top of that, he hugged them. We as staff, we were worried about him because he was frail at that time. In 2018, I stopped working. I used to earn 100,000 rands. My family has suffered for the work that I do. This is a great country. South Africa is a, is a great country. As black South African men, we've got to heal. Something is wrong. We can't be number one in rape globally. To be number one, you must go and ask the proteas if they've ever been number one to know how difficult it is to be number one. So to the people of Uganda, to the people of Swaziland, Jamaica, Kenya, and all the countries where I've been going to try and find ways in which we can heal. Thank you so much. I had COVID in 2020. I spent my Christmas and my, and my, and my New Year in Kachiri, 45 minutes away from Kampala. People cared for me. So when you call people from other African nations, we call them Mama Kore Kore. I was healed by my daughter from Uganda. I made music in Uganda. People of Zimbabwe, from the Kalanga nation, 
took care of me in Kukuletu. Every time you see people being shot and killed in Kukuletu, minister was there at Lumkele's book joint. So the story of South Africa is not a story of doom and gloom. President Ramaphosa was right when he said hope and resilience is who we are. The same way President Mbeki was right when he said the rivers and everything else. So I stand here, I'm just a peasant. My family is, a, is, like, is like an ordinary family. It's like people who told me, hey, we sent you to school to be a healer and be a psychologist. I'm only 45 years old. I've been a psychologist for 15 years, only to realize that people don't want healing. They want to be right. We've got to heal as Africans. The fact that people are running to South Africa, running away from their countries and crossing the Atlantic, I mean, all these oceans that they are crossing to die because they are running away because of African leaders. We can't fight against our leaders, our political leaders, but what has to happen, we've got to be mentored and we've got to heal. And Tina, those of us who are on Twitter every day, we've got data and everything. We've got to make sure that we go back to our townships and our villages and we must stop being arrogant. I learned this from a Muslim guy who's a rapper from, 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 from um, from Kukule to T80s, Achi Sopaz is his name. He told me, I was like, yo, man, I've been looking at, uh, I, I sent an application to the gift of givers. I want a job because my family is complaining because I'm not working anymore. I'm like, I'm not working. Achi Sopaz, he told me, if you want to go to heaven, according to Islam, you must have the arrogance that is less than one grain of sand. I say this being a proud Tosa man raised in a Christian home, and to my father, Unzinzinzi, for 30 plus years, I had resentment towards him. He apologized to me. As black South African men, we've got to heal. Because if we don't, our kids are doomed. And God's minister. Congratulations to you. And indeed, I think the message we have to heal. We have to heal. We have to heal. We have to heal. And we need to also find a way of being comfortable speaking about mm. mental health. Mm. Um, it is an important conversation. Um, it does require a lot of vulnerability, but there's also strength in vulnerability. Yeah. Don't forget that. And don't forget, it goes down in your DMs. Check your DMs. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, check your Facebook message, your LinkedIn. You don't.